Introduction to Watersheds Montana is a headwater state, that is, three major watersheds start in Montana. Any snow or rain that falls in Montana that is not consumed or evaporated will eventually flow all the way to the Pacific Ocean, Hudson Bay, or the Gulf of Mexico. As a headwater state, how we manage our water has wide-reaching consequences on many downstream users. A watershed is an area of land from which all of the water drains or seeps to a common point. It can also be thought of as the total upstream area drained by a stream or river. A watershed also represents a connection between all of the people and activities found within its boundaries. Watersheds can be very big or they can be very small. They are nested within each other, sort of like a set of mixing bowls, where the smaller one fits within the larger ones. For example, Montana is a headwaters to the Mississippi watershed. The Mississippi watershed area drains over 1 million square miles in the United States. However, the headwater streams that drain into the Mississippi can be very small and are nested within that larger watershed. For example, this is the Little Prickly Pear Creek watershed, a tributary of the Missouri River, which drains into the Mississippi River just north of St. Louis, Missouri. Both Little Prickly Pear Creek and the Missouri River are part of the Mississippi watershed. But as you can imagine, the Little Prickly Pear Creek watershed is just a minor portion of the Mississippi River watershed. It only drains an area of a little over 641 square miles. Montana is divided into seven major river basins or watersheds, Kootenai, Clark Fork, Upper Missouri, Lower Missouri, Yellowstone, Little Missouri, and St. Mary. Now that we know what a watershed is, let's break it down into the different parts. Rivers and streams transport water and sediment out of the watershed. They provide important sources of water for the community and wildlife. Uplands are the higher ground above rivers and streams. At higher elevations, smaller streams and tributaries originate from snowmelt and springs. Uplands are also where many human activities occur. Floodplains slow and absorb water, lessening flood impact downstream. Rich soil is deposited and aquifers are replenished. Wetlands are saturated with water for extended periods of time. They filter pollution, replenish groundwater, and provide important wildlife habitat. Groundwater is water stored in the pore spaces of soil. In every watershed, no matter the size, the landscape is constantly changing due to the movement of water. River channels are dynamic. A river will move and adjust to changing water conditions. It also changes shape as the river moves down from the mountains to the valley. In the mountains, channels are typically straight. As the river progresses down the valley, it meanders more. This occurs because over the course of many thousands of years, rivers have adjusted to transporting a certain amount of water and sediment out of the watershed. The area's geology, precipitation, vegetation, slope, and land use activities all contribute to the shape and behavior of the river. The boundary between a river and a floodplain is called the riparian area. In fact, any body of water has a riparian area, whether it is a river, a wetland, or a lake. The riparian area encompasses the body of water as well as adjacent land, such as the riverbank, that is directly influenced, and also influences, that body of water. The width of the riparian area varies for each water body and is dependent upon the local hydrology, soil and geology, vegetation, human activities, and upstream conditions. Riparian areas are about 1% of the land in Montana. They also provide important habitat for many different kinds of wildlife. Floodplains are low-lying areas prone to flooding, usually adjoining rivers and lakes. Floods are a natural part of the ecosystem process. A relatively undisturbed floodplain can buffer the effects of flooding by slowing down and storing floodwaters and also helping reduce the negative effects to water quality such as increased sedimentation. The riparian area provides these services as well. 
Floodplains also play an important role in recharging aquifers, and they also provide habitat to support diverse populations of plants and animals. Wetlands are areas of land that are saturated by water for part or all of the year and have unique soil characteristics and plants. Many animals depend on wetlands for homes and resting spots. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, aquatic insects, and certain mammals need wetlands as a place for their young to be born and grow. Although wetlands and riparian areas, streamside green zones, only cover 1-4% to of Montana, these places support half of Montana's plant species and 38% of amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals of special concern. What we do in the headwaters with the land and water affects water quality and quantity for all communities living downstream. If you would like to learn more about your local watershed, visit the Montana Watershed Coordination Council website listed under the first bullet. You might want to become a volunteer with your local watershed group. In addition to being a volunteer stream team member, most watershed organizations have many other volunteer tasks that might be interesting for you. If you would like more information, be sure to watch our other four water modules and check out the PDF document Water Resources, Agencies, and Other Resources links that can be found on the same page you found this module. Thank you for watching. This presentation was developed by the Montana Water Course with funding from the Environmental Protection Agency and was produced by Mountain Goat Instructional Design.